Welcome to the personal end of year show show. I can't believe we're back in this room almost a year on. I remember sitting here with you Mel and not sure how it would go, if anyone would listen, anyone would like it. So yeah, and they did hopefully, and hopefully more and more people are liking it and it's going to grow and grow. And so today there's gonna to be a little bit of a twist. I am going to be interviewed by Mel. Mel's going to ask questions about the personal podcast, but also in the true nature of the show, get a little bit personal with me. Excellent, thank you. And I'm delighted to be the first guest presenter on the personal podcast. This is the episode where we get to up close and personal with the real people behind the business. And I am delighted to have you here, Charlotte, as my first guest. <laughs> we have some rules, no small talk, as always. As you know, you wrote them. Yeah. <laughs> no direct business chat, and we will go straight into the podcast. So Brilliant. remind us, why do you do this podcast? Okay, so it is to get to know the real person behind the professional. That's the tagline. <laughs> Just <laughs> made sure I said that right. <laughs> Um, do you remember in the first episode, I spelt personal wrong as well. Yeah, that was, well, that was a, yeah, quite a blooper. <laughs> but you know, it's because we go through business and there's so much small talk. And it's, small talk's great and it has its moment, but you never really know what's going on in someone's life, what's going on behind the smile. And you know, it kind of all stemmed from when I went through my miscarriages. And I wanted to tell people, but I just realized it wasn't a topic that we talk about in business. Mm -hmm. But me being me, I just decided I would, you know, so I picked up the phone. I still remember it in my living room and I was like, I'm sorry, I can't make the meeting today. And it was to someone I didn't know. I've never met them before. Um, and I was like, he was obviously like, oh, why? I was like, I'm having a miscarriage. And actually it felt quite liberating just to just say that, you know, if I'd broken my arm, I'd say I'd broken my arm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And actually the person I said it to was like, oh my goodness, we, we went through that last year. We're going through it right now. We're about to start IVF. And, all of a sudden it just opened up a conversation and I actually get on really well with that person now and like really good business friends and it, if I just decided to say oh, I can't make it I've got a cold yeah it might yeah. have ruined the relationship yeah. so I just wanted people to have there's so many stigmas attached to certain topics and I just mm -hmm. don't want there to be and you know and I know not everyone's as open as me and mm -hmm. that's fine but I just want people who are open and want to feel like they can talk about these things they can talk about them yeah absolutely and I suppose it gives people the opportunity to be just that open and honest I yeah. guess what you always say there's no topic off limits Absolutely. We're all the same, aren't we? We're all human. So, yeah, yeah that's and that's amazing. the thing. So many people go through these things. Mm -hmm. You think you're, they're unusual. And don't get me wrong, some people's problems are quite unique. Mm -hmm. But actually, we've all experienced a lot of different things that we can usually relate Absolutely. to in some way. Yeah, so. and actually, you're not on your own. You yeah, know, yeah. Oh, that felt so felt. nice. I mean, you don't want someone to have gone through what no, you're going no, through. But equally, no. it's nice that someone can understand. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Oh, that's great. What topics have you covered? All right, okay, now I had to write these down. Quite a few. So I'm going to try and reel them all off. <laughs> Su suicide, transgender, disability, war, women in business, eating disorders, heart surgery, sexual harassment, marriage, divorce, stoma bags, periods, cancer, strokes, getting run over, ghosts, Parkinson's, dead bodies, poverty, nose jobs, prison, can't read that one, twins, mental health, IVF, house burning down yeah, <laughs> and menopause so quite a lot quite a yeah. huge array of topics and I think as well the great thing about personal is that it's real issues that affect real people just because when you're running a company it doesn't take that away absolutely and I think that's I think what people find so relatable about the show as well it's not you know sometimes a lot of these people on podcasts they're famous people they're well-known celebrities and that's nice to get an insight into their world mm. but it's not the real world always mm -hmm. and yeah so people can say oh, actually they run a business in the same town as me they've gone through this and they're still getting on and they're, they're, yeah. they're able to do this and yeah, it's it helps. fantastic yeah. really good so there's quite some topics you've covered a lot of them are very tricky very difficult and mm. for you obviously you run in a podcast here but you're still a human. Oh, Which yeah. of those topics have you been most affected by, would you say? Oh, you know, actually all of them, like mm. uh, I'm a very empathetic empathetic person and I do absorb people's problems mm -hmm. and worries sometimes and I, I, it's a problem for me. So like, listening to people, I just want to try and help them and, you know, there's it, an emotional burden that comes mm. with it. It's not just the fact of like producing a great show and everything like that. It, it, I do take things to heart, but I think, Strangely, one of the things that really affected me was something that um, Sam Spurs said, which you're talking about, 
separating from mm -hmm. her partner mm -hmm. and you know as a, a mom of two small kids I was just like oh it must be so hard being a single mom again something you can relate to at certain times but being a single mom and then having looking after the kids but then I said but it must be so nice when you hand them over it's not your weekend and you get to rest and she's like well actually no it can be so empty and lonely and you know Christmas Eve Christmas Day when that has to happen so when you have children you bring them to the world assuming that every Christmas every birthday every milestone you will see because you're their parent and when that doesn't work and you have to share your children because of this blended aspect I can't, I can't tell you how horrible oh, you're it breaking is. My heart it's just awful. <laughs> Honestly, Charlotte, I remember when everything went, when everything happened the way that it did. I dropped the girls off for the first time that they'd stayed with their dad. I dropped them off um, with him, and I drove back to this house that I'd worked super hard with, hard for for these children and for for my ex husband. And I was going to go into this house and it had no soul. There was no children there to share it with. My partner had gone, and I remember just feeling like. Oh my God, the loneliness is, it hurts. Some reason, like, I think, well, not for some reason, having small kids, yeah, yeah. you just don't always see that side. Mm. You always think, oh yeah, they're great, they haven't got the kids, they're able to go out partying this weekend. I, I don't get to do that. Mm. And it's just like, wow, goodness yeah, me. Sat in that empty house where yeah. it's kind of like, oh, who am I? What is my purpose? I'm a mum and I'm just sat here. <laughs> yeah, mm. and I just never had thought about it like oh. that before. So it's when you look at things from a different perspective, that's powerful. Mm. And how do you deal with that? How do you manage that? If you're absorbing all, because they have really deep issues you're speaking to people about. Yeah, uh, it's it's nice also, <laughs> excuse me, to have the, um, the conversation to get it out of your system yeah. and chat about it. And quite often I'll, I'll chat to Chris about it at home or actually Ryan's really great for that mm -hmm. on the, in the car afterwards or mm -hmm. we'll talk about it and like, oh, gosh, that was heavy, that was deep. Yeah. And they're almost like checking on each other, are you okay after listening to that? Um, but sometimes, you know, also the conversations play around in your head like mm. they do anyway and mm. one of the guests coined the phrase of vulnerability hangover that they get after the show and I was like yes I get that too mm -hmm. you know worried about things that I've said things that I've absorbed from other people worrying about how other people will feel about what they've said so it's just often again it's the answers to kind of talk it out yeah and, absolutely yeah absolutely and I suppose it's almost like the positivity that comes from that it's not a mm -hmm. great sunshine pump, but actually these people are still there, they're still getting on with their lives, there's still all of them running businesses, mm. yet with all of these issues that happen to people. Yeah, it gives great well. perspective. Mm, you yes, know, you think you're having worse. a bad day sometimes, yeah, yeah. and then you hear someone, and you're like, actually, yeah, it, I'm really not. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. So on so many different levels, and then equally, like people sharing their joy as well, that infuses me, that fills yeah. me with passion again. Yeah. And, and so it's it works both sides. Yeah, absolutely. Ways. Oh, that makes sense, that makes sense. Again, talking about those topics that you've covered, what has been, I know you pretty well, I know you're pretty unshockable, but, <laughs> well. <laughs> but what has been the most, if somebody said something and you were like, oh my God, that's the last thing I expected to come out of your mouth, like, what have you been most yeah. shocked about? Yeah, no, it's a clear moment actually. Oh, really? um, it's episode two with Ian Kinnery. Okay. You're open about the fact that you contemplated suicide. What was the thought that stopped you from doing so? So I've got to say, Charlotte, that's a shocking question. I'm sorry, but that's in the name of the uh, podcast. <laughs> for sure. And I knew you, you told me the questions were going to be blunt, but that's mm -hmm. not quite what I mean. Okay. It's shocking because it's shocking to me because the presumption is that there was a thought that stopped me going through with it. Okay. That's not what happened. Right. Tell me more, please. I screwed it up. Oh. I, I went through with it. Oh my goodness. And I woke up and I was still alive. I knew he'd attempted suicide. I presumed there was a thought that had changed his mind and he didn't go through with it. And there wasn't. He said that he meant it. It just didn't work out. Wow. And literally, and it, was, I was, it was only, I think, my second podcast I did, yes, so yeah. I didn't know how to handle this. I was a bit rubbish still at it, the learning, and I was a bit like, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I just the, the fact that we were having a conversation that shouldn't have ever happened if mm -hmm, he'd got, mm -hmm, if his mm -hmm. plan had gone to plan. Wow. And it turned out the car um, had a catalytic converter, and if it, hadn't have yes, had that yeah. I wouldn't have been speaking to him wow. 
and that just blew my mind and you know quite often certainly in the early days I'm a bit more prepared now I didn't mm. actually know that much about the guests mm -hmm. I maybe knew that one shocking thing but again it's not a question anyone had ever dug deep into mm -hmm. and I decided to do it kind of filmed <laughs> so I wasn't prepared at all for the answers that I got back from people. You still aren't to some extent because you can ask this question. You might know something happened, but you didn't know how they felt about yeah, it or yeah. the intricacies of yeah. it. So yeah, that just, it blew my mind. And I just thought he was so brave to be able to how talk. how honest yeah. of Ian to actually share yeah. that information. Yeah, amazing. And I know that it'll have helped so many people, Absolutely. you know, considering Absolutely. that just, yeah, it just really shocked me. Mm. I was just, and it, you know, I was just like, are you okay? You know, after talking about this, and he's like, yeah, yeah, fine. You know, it's, it's, I was yeah. just uh, um, admire his honesty yeah. and bravery. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, very, very honest. So, do you monitor which guest has been the most listened to? We do, do we you? do indeed. And I had, to, I had to write some figures down here because wow. um, my memory is not that great, but. Yes, and actually, Mel, yours is currently the most popular. No way. It is. I mean, oh. don't get me wrong, you do have an advantage being the first guest. So wow. your podcast. Yeah, yeah. It's been that, out for longer. It I'm has. the oldest podcast. Yes, yeah, you are our number one. And it, but it, it shocks me that they still do get views and listens wow. to it, trickles down. There's obviously that initial boom when we're like promoting it. Yeah. But I think yours has had 300, around 310 wow. views, downloads. Not um, including me, because I just can't bring myself to listen to oh. it. I felt I'd really overshared afterwards. I was like, no, we don't want to hear what I said. It's, it's the vulnerability hangover. Yeah, yeah. I, I always feel like that. Yeah. I'll feel like this after this one yeah. today. And you just I feel worried that you're going to be judged. And But actually... Yes. Yeah, some people have said that it, it does create that safe space where they do feel like they're able to share. And mm. it's it's amazing some people have said that they've shared things with me on film, because it's not just me, it's everyone, almost anyone, and they, they haven't even told their friends. Yeah. And to say that to me, that just feels like I'm just in awe that they're able to do that. Yeah, it, but I think you, you always kind of play your own skills down, but you are very, because you're so open yourself yeah. that invites that back you kind of create that safe space for people yeah. to, to talk I think I would have like having you, experienced it myself yeah it that's, it's so lovely to say and I would have usually just said oh no don't be silly but actually I'm realizing really that more do. I used really to do. always get people telling me their life stories anyway mm -hmm. you know even if I didn't ask for them and it happened at uh, the women TED uh, mm -hmm, event mm -hmm. in Teesside um, and this lady just came up to me and started telling telling me stuff and I was just like I can't remember what it was, but she's just like, you've just got such an open face. Yeah. And but I'm just like, okay. <laughs> but I guess it's not a bad thing. Yeah, especially but, doing this kind of thing. It's yeah. Really nice. And uh, I think it's probably why the show's done so well. Well, I've just, I really enjoy it as well. And it, that helps. <laughs> in, like just talking to people, talk about things that you're not meant to talk about, that you mm. don't always get the time to talk about mm. and just really getting to know someone on a quite a personal level oh, that would have absolutely. just been a business contact. Yeah, or, yeah. So it's, that that is really nice. I feel it's an honour to be able to do it, but I couldn't do it without people willing to be open and brave and talk about mm. these subjects so I'm, I'm privileged yeah and um, some great guests oh yes we have and back to those great guests second most viewed is Joe Tosh who okay. talked about her journey yeah. with Parkinson's yeah. again yeah. brutal and then so honest and again helping more people than she'll ever realize by sharing that information and how mm. she deals with it um, Sam Spores is doing really well. That's on about 200 and that was only released in October. Oh, right. And JJ Chalmers, who yeah. is a celebrity, yeah, and my yeah, celebrity, <laughs> but he's, he's on 180 and his was only released in November. So people are coming mm. for you, Mel. Yeah, well, do you know what? They're welcome. <laughs> They're rather welcome, much more interesting than me. Um, is there anything that you wish that Ryan had edited out? Mm. There is, and I might ask him to edit. You kind of still go back and do that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can't. Yeah. To be fair, it's very few and far between that we edit bits out. Wow. And um, there was one bit I asked. <laughs> maybe this one. <laughs> <laughs> there will be some things, maybe I don't know. Mm -hmm. But even for myself, like I'll hear myself, and actually, I'm just like, oh, that sounds awful. But hey, that's, that's me. Yeah, that's like, it's like the spelling of personal yeah. at the start. <laughs> and I was just like, everyone's like, oh, should we take it out? Like, well, no, yeah. because that is me. I am a bit ditzy sometimes. Mm -hmm. I can't spell the best, and. Yeah, that's just, yeah, you want that genuine authenticity mm. to come through as well. Oh, and it definitely does. Yeah, and the, the one that I did um, cut out was Matt Ord. And, <laughs> the man boggles. <laughs> and I knew he would do this. I should have been more prepared for the sex question. Mm -hmm. You can imagine what he said. He's like, you should know. And, oh. <laughs> yeah, and I should have said, like, oh, you wish. Like, but I just didn't want to seem mean as well. Yeah. So what I did, I just kind of was like, 
awkward silence, which on the podcast, on the if it's you can see the YouTube, you would have maybe seen, oh yeah, you can tell he's lying. Yeah. But because of the silence on, on um, just of audio course. only, yes, people yes. would have thought, oh God, so they have. And just for clarity, I have not. <laughs> Are you sure? Absolutely. <laughs> you that. With me, you've got to Absolutely. be honest. <laughs> hundred <laughs> percent honest but yeah just that I think that's the only bit that I've really mm. cut out that was just like showed me in a bad silence yeah yeah <laughs> they, they would have they just would have had questions raised and other bits of I've given away too it's too much personal information but it's not about me mm-hmm. yeah that's and, and that enough. can easily yeah, happen yeah um and yeah just sometimes I think I haven't come across in the best way you know if it's taken out of context mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if there's a but yeah. but yeah, it's sometimes I'm just like, oh, but that's just, just me, you know, I'm not yeah. perfect. Yeah, which I guess is maybe why it's having so much success. Maybe. Um, on a similar kind of vein, any regrets apart from asking Matthew Ward about sex, which you should know better? Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> other than that, any other regrets, questions you've asked people? Or? Um, no, I don't think so. Have I written anything down here? They're just, yeah, just the context thing. There's sometimes Ooh. when I'm talking about my girls, I think it was with um, Claire Ooh. Preston, where I was Ooh. talking about how I kind of, before I had them, was maybe hoping for a boy. Mm-hmm. Um, just because of all the, the trouble you can have with just being a woman and my troubles I've had with just periods, just, you know, even yeah. if you take away the periods element. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't, when I saw the, the, yeah, the three lines on the scan, that means that they've got a vagina. I was just like, oh, poor, poor babies yeah, you know they're gonna have to go through all that <laughs> and I didn't want people to think that I was just like oh I just want boys because mm. I don't know why they would think that anyway but it's not true like I'm so grateful for my girls <laughs> absolutely I see you with your yeah. girls yeah and now I've got magical. them I could yeah. never imagine it Super any special. other way so yeah. yeah I didn't want people to think oh I'm grateful mm. but you know you've got still a healthy child it wasn't mm. like that no. <laughs> and have you experienced any kind of adverse reactions to anything that you've said or one of the guests said yeah people are very vocal these yes days, we have Especially on social media <laughs> yeah well, yeah we had i would yeah. say the episode um and a lady literally hounded us with calls and i think yeah. even other family members just saying what they said weren't true wasn't true and i i respect i was on holiday at the time mm-hmm. i respected that uh, and I want to get across that I'm sharing people's version of their truth. Mm-hmm. You know, what I say is my truth might be very different to someone else's. Absolutely. And I, I'm respectful of that. And just because I have someone on my show, it doesn't mean I believe every word they say either. Just like if someone calls to complain, it doesn't mean I believe every word mm-hmm. they say. Mm-hmm. I'm not there to judge who's right or wrong. It's just, yeah. you know, it's people sharing their story, people yeah. to listen, and the audience make up their own mind yeah. on what happened. I'm always very aware there's two sides to every story. Yeah. But, you know, I just can't. Yeah, you've just got one person sat in front of you. Yeah, you? definitely. And then I couldn't get someone in to verify it. I wouldn't have the time. And yeah, I, you know, I, I feel I felt bad because this person, no matter what the truth was, mm-hmm. was very distressed about mm-hmm. it. Yeah, um, you wouldn't want somebody to feel that no, way. No, no, I wouldn't want someone to feel that way. And so then, you know, it does make you know, questions in your mind. Am I doing the right thing? You know, should I even do this? Is it messing? Is it too personal? And but then that, that's the only negative we've had mm-hmm. and lots of so much so yeah. much more positive yeah. so um mm. yeah hopefully no more of that but yeah. equally you know sometimes yeah you know, i don't want to be hurting people but you know a bit of controversy is good for the show yeah yeah i guess so i guess so sorry to interrupt but just a quick word about our sponsor b daily I've been subscribing to the Bee Daily now since starting my business. It provides relevant and informative information directly to my inbox, not just about the North East, but also national news. If you're interested in subscribing, we'll put the link in the description box so you can get the business news directly to your inbox. Now back to the podcast. And like you say, you've just got one person there, so it's their story. Yeah, yeah, it's the... And somebody else has got a different view of, of the same events, kind of people see things, feel things, experience things differently. Absolutely. So I guess it's one, just, it? we're a bit more aware and getting people to say, this is how yeah. I feel yes. that this was. This is my version of events. Yeah. Just so there's, because yeah, there was not the yeah yeah this is the truth this is the fact yeah you see i wouldn't have even thought about that no me neither i didn't (laughs) cried during any of your podcasts um not with laughter (laughs) (laughs) i probably have cried with laughter as well but i feel like in one of the episodes now i don't know if i actually shed a tear but my eyes definitely welled up Mm. so it's um the episode about ivf um, mm. So just hearing someone else's experience, it was the one episode where I got to be more personal and share my Absolutely, story. Yeah. Um, 
so just hearing them talk about it, it resonated so deeply mm. with me so yeah and maybe i'll cry in this one who yeah. knows <laughs> i hope not i hope not i'm <laughs> trying to keep it light <laughs> <laughs> Um, what is the best piece of wisdom you've received and who, who gave you that wisdom? Oh, honestly, there's so much wisdom throughout everything. I, that's another thing. Yeah, I might have some emotional baggage afterwards, but I learn so much. Yeah, yeah, Just from, I, everyone's so wise. Not only do they have their own story, they have their own unique take on life mm -hmm. and their summaries and what they've learned through it. And Lauda, Ellie Lauda, her, I loved her phrase, it's hearts, not parts. So I call myself pansexual these days. Okay. The pan. No, I was doing <laughs> pan, no meaning like it's about, it's literally about the hearts, not the parts. That just, re yeah, I've always been like that anyway. Yeah. It's just about the, you know, the way someone can make you feel. Mm. It doesn't matter what they look like, their age, their sex. But just that phrase, hearts, not parts. I just think that captures that. And I just love that. So I've, I've used that quite mm. a bit. Um, also, you know, things like your health is your wealth. I can only remember the really small ones because my yeah. brain is staying play with my brain. But it, all these things yeah, they knew, no. But then when Ooh. there's a story to back it up, yeah, it just really matters. There have been loads of wise things Ian said. but And then Michaela talked about her an yes. emotional backpack. And yeah. just that lovely, it's not a lovely analogy, but it just really made sense mm. to me. And Conditioning from society or, you know, trauma from our childhood, whatever it might be, we carry that along with us in our whole lives. And I think sometimes we don't realise that what we've what we've kind of taken on in this backpack <laughs> with us was not ever ours to carry. That was someone else's mistakes or that was someone else's problem, but we've made it ours because we felt it was some sort of reflection on, on us as a person or you know, the lack of love or lack of whatever that yeah. might, that situation might be. So how we walk around carrying other uh -huh. people's emotions and uh -huh. or, or our uh -huh. own and we can actually take it off. And just again, that visualization of that image just was so powerful. Yeah, that is kind of. So, yeah, learnt so, so much. Just, yeah. It's it's amazing. Really a great experience for you then. Really, really good. Yeah, so many things that sometimes you know, but sometimes you just need reminding of. Yeah, to hear it out loud, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, which guest has been the funniest? Um, well, Matt was pretty Obviously, funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just how he, he can turn like, anything into yeah. laughter. So, Matthew, what's life like without an anus? <laughs> what a start. <laughs> Amazing. Um, well, it's no pain in the ass. I can tell you that much. And I love that about him, Alfie, um, who's just recently been released. I mean, oh, okay. it's, he's he's also, he's a comedian. You know, okay, he's done so stand up. Yeah, his off. voices, <laughs> and we get some impressions within the podcast. So yeah, his was really good. And everybody had done George Bush, you know, it's kind of not, not at ease reading the camera there. Um, and, and, and Donald Trump, everybody does Donald Trump, but nobody did Obama. And then so I studied him and watched him. OK, fantastic. Um, so how has it been producing the podcast sort of behind the scenes? Yes. So do you want a unique insight? I would love how? it. Yeah. Yes. So it. People do, and I, I know. Even imagine what you're going to say. Well, I know that you'll know a little bit from being a guest, but mm. we have kind of developed a little bit more. But you get to see the questions in advance, mm -hmm. and some people are like, "Oh, why did you do that? Is it not better to surprise people?" But firstly, I want because they're quite personal questions. Very personal, yeah. It's good that they can also think about the answers, have time. You know, even for myself, you're know, thinking mm. about answers. It's really helpful, and it also you tend to cut out a bit of the. Ooh, let me have a little think yeah. and, and it just keeps it flowing a little bit and I think we've all been in interviews where we've been asked a question and we actually think you know what I should have said this and, and this was really Absolutely. good so people so, have got that opportunity yeah and so now and then also that I, when I just sent I used to just email off the questions mm -hmm. and then I realized that caused offense to one lady and I was really deeply wow. sorry for that so now we call people okay. and we say this is what I'm thinking asking are these yeah. all okay so just lessons that we've learned along the way yeah. and then everyone gets the chance to edit it and watch it so most people choose not to mm -hmm. and and I understand <laughs> I why yeah. <laughs> um so you mentioned the team so you did a pack personnel mm -hmm. so it was a little bit of a mini series you got to speak to all of your team members. Mm -hmm. Are they going to get the chance to kind of flip things and turn the tables on you? Yeah, well, um, I feel, and, and I'll do that in this podcast as well mm. when it comes to your personal questions for me. I give away a little bit of myself in mm. every podcast. Yeah. So 
I feel that by it's kind of a cheat really because by listening to every podcast you'll get to know me <laughs> so you just got to listen to them all the whole series yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> love it but um, I will answer the 10 questions mm. at the end and we still do uh, need to do more pack interviews as well yeah because they're, they're great for me as well to absolutely. get to know what the a team. great opportunity to get some real insights yeah. into people that probably wouldn't come out kind of exactly. sat having a coffee who knew Ryan had a nose job <laughs> <laughs> or just wait till you see the edit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Good point. Right, I think I'm a big fan, as you know well. I think you're amazing. The podcast is amazing, and it was shortlisted for the Women's Podcast of the Year. Yeah. How yeah. did you feel about that? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, it's yeah. fantastic. It's brand new, isn't it? It's yeah, great. and it was international as well, and wow. I was just. Obviously, I knew we'd entered it because I entered it. <laughs> so I, I used to say it was a surprise, but it genuinely was a surprise because I thought, let's just give it a go. It's our first year. The, ep- the episode that actually got shortlisted was episode two. It was Ian's Fabulous. episode. Yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. even like how far we've come along in that year, and don't get me wrong, it's still not perfect. I can still improve loads. We can all improve always oh. and new technology and everything. But yeah, it was just lovely to like have that recognition. And I knew we wouldn't win. I mean, the ones that were winning were like properly produced like some were like bbc produced and wow, stuff so okay but it was just That's amazing to be yeah there. yeah it really was and you know what awards can be like and yeah, stuff yeah. but genuinely just was really happy really happy Fantastic. So, yeah. it was amazing amazing achievement um so almost a year was it january we did our first we did it we recorded it in january but it yeah. took us a little while to get our act together and get it turned okay. around so we kind of like what are we doing what is she talking about <laughs> no no it wasn't you it was just like right so how do we spell personal <laughs> where are we sharing this once we got that on you were away yeah yeah <laughs> but it has yeah. been amazing you've achieved so much but what is next um I think we, we need to do, we're going to do more. We're going to mm-hmm. aim to Fair. do it for another year. Fantastic. And the main thing is, Ryan, Ryan may be like, no, please, not another one. But <laughs> I'm enjoying it and people are enjoying mm-hmm. it. And we get mm-hmm. so much really positive feedback from it. We may also launch another podcast next year unrelated to this one. Okay, and fun. we're hoping to do more of it for our clients as yeah. well. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yes, yeah. We'd love to do a, a live podcast. Yeah. So hopefully that scary. will happen at some point. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's scary. Mm-hmm. But again, we don't really edit that much. Like, to be fair, this is probably going to be the be most really. edited. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it could be. And, you know, if people are coming to a live audience they understand that we're like yeah. mess things up a little bit and yeah, yeah so that's exciting exciting times right. ahead yes so i've got some um questions for you <laughs> uh, yeah sorry but i am really interested to know mm-hmm. so during personal you ask really direct questions mm-hmm. of your guests who has made you know which question mm-hmm. and to which guest has made you feel the most uncomfortable um, you know, all of the openers make me feel uncomfortable. Okay. It's probably a cop out because it's also a challenge to myself. Mm. You know, if, if it's if it feels okay to ask, it's almost like it's not hard enough. Mm. I need to push myself a little bit more because that's kind of a, almost like the USP to the the, the mm. show. I've got to be asking difficult things that it's difficult for me. I feel so rude, so cheeky sometimes. Mm. But the most difficult probably was the one with Ian yeah, about suicide yeah. and to be totally thrown by the answer definitely yeah and I, I've got some coming That's up understandable. that are going to be really tough as well mm. so um you just got to be brave yeah and just hope that people understand that it's not purely just I don't know to create entertainment or something like yeah. that it's genuinely I think these subjects need to be talked about and sometimes mm-hmm you just have to get direct and that's the best yeah, way yeah and i suppose now you've got the track record so people can actually understand what personality is all about yeah so, you know, and the thing is surprises. as well another worry i had was mm. that people think oh what a nosy cow but actually <laughs> i'm genuinely not a nosy person like it's just i it's, it is more just around removing that stigma you know a lot of my friends will say i'm not like the one to dig 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 oh. unless there is a purpose to it but it's just, yeah, it's just something about asking the questions that no one will ask. Yeah. It's... Maybe it just gives you that freedom, kind of, you know, this is what it's all about. So you, you can actually ask yeah. those questions. Pushing myself out of my yeah. comfort zone as well. Which is always good. Yes. Always really good. Yeah. Um, so you've already covered topics in the series about being women in business. And this is not about that. But as a fellow woman in business, yes. you are a woman in business. <laughs> so tell me about that. What do you find the most challenging? 
how do you balance everything? Yeah, um, before I had children, I would have said, oh, there's no difference. Mm -hmm. And I genuinely, maybe I was lucky or very naive or just didn't notice things. Mm -hmm. I totally believe that there are problems that women face in business, but I've mainly noticed them since having children, okay. you know, since when you're pregnant and you feel sick all the time, mm. it definitely affects business. And mm -hmm. um, you know, I could go even as far as to say when you're having really awful periods, it affects business. Um, and just to be getting out there, you don't fancy going to a networking event. Yeah, and that's when you're, horrendous. yeah, it's just not, not great. Um, also having small children and breastfeeding and mm -hmm. trying to find places to do that in between work. So a lot of the reasons are biological reasons and I don't think there's an answer for it, no, unfortunately. I'm hoping you were yeah, have it after all I do, these interviews. I do think there's mm -hmm. something <clears throat> at home. I think a lot of the discrimination is at home and Definitely. women are happy for, to have it that way. Now, Chris is amazing, mm -hmm. but he knows I wouldn't have it any other way. Mm -hmm. like, he probably helps out more around the house, certainly in the kitchen more. Mm -hmm. And I think as women, we need to speak up more for that and say, no, you know, I work too, you yeah. do it. This default parenting, Absolutely. you know, default yeah. parenting is a thing and I've fallen victim to it. So it's almost mm -hmm. like women need to sort their own minds out yeah. because I was just happy to have the kids in front of the TV and I was playing with them both and Chris was drinking beer watching rugby. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and it, again, I just didn't notice it. So mm. I was just like, oh yes, this is great. I'm no, having a lovely no. time. And then I look and I'm like, Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? And sometimes you just need to step outside yourself and think, right, Chris, I'm going for a bath. Yeah. There you go. And again, I don't think anyone's doing it on purpose. No. It's just the culture and what we've absorbed yeah. and tradition over the years. Mm. And I think if it's fairer at home, it'll be fairer yeah. in the workplace. Absolutely. Because you won't have to be the one that always goes to a hospital appointment, a doctor's yeah. appointment, or someone's feeling sick, or takes them to the dentist, because it's even. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a big topic. There's a yeah, lot we could talk about huge, there. isn't it? Yeah. But that's just what I've found yeah. really supportive for me at home. When Chris yeah. helps out, it means I can do more yeah. at work as well. Yeah, which is, yeah, like you said, just how it should be. Yeah. Um, so I've got a question. You've kind of covered part of it already, but I'm going to ask a little bit more. So... Obviously, it's challenging balancing your career, being a mum, being a wife, mm -hmm. being a daughter, like all of those responsibilities yeah. that you have. Yet you still kind of find the time to develop your team, kind of look for new ideas um, within your business. Kind of what drives you to do that? And, and how do you manage to keep that creativity, I suppose? Mm. Oh, it's a burden. I wish I wasn't so creative and coming up with ideas. Give yourself a break. It's like, oh, I know, we're like really yeah. busy, but now we'll do this. Yeah, <laughs> no, this was on, on my first day back from maternity leave and it was short maternity mm -hmm. leave and it probably mm -hmm. wasn't even a real maternity leave because I was on the phone and emails all the time, just the way it is when you mm -hmm. run a business. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, right, I came back with three main ideas. One of them was personal. Oh, okay. And it's because of what I went through in the run-up yeah, to it. But then I felt so poorly yeah. during pregnancy, I couldn't launch it then. And so the ideas just still keep running, you know, even if I'm mm. not at work. And it's, it is annoying and it does hamper me sometimes because I'm like a little moth flying into the light yeah, all the time. Yeah. And um, yeah, and it, I just wish sometimes I'd like, give yourself a break. You know, you didn't need to launch this podcast. I, I, it was Camille was... I don't know, maybe about five months when we started talking about the idea. Mm -hmm. And then January time should have been about nine months. Um, I think my maths is terrible, like my spelling. But little, um, still, yeah. very little. <laughs> and I was back at work three days a week, but mm. I'm like, hey, let's launch a podcast. And part of it, again, was naivety. You know, you don't realise the work that goes into mm -hmm. these podcasts. Mm -hmm. And but then I just, oh, I just creative and I need a, an outpouring of it. Yeah. And I love that. And that's why yeah. I love my job being creative. But I don't want to paint that picture that it's easy juggling everything because it's not. Because if I do that, then other people, it puts pressure oh, on other people yeah, thinking, oh, well, I should be doing this. It's not easy. And it's at the detriment to my mental health a lot of the mm. time. It was only last night I was saying to Chris, you know, I work every night almost. Like Friday, Saturday, I try not to work. Mm -hmm. Every other night, I work. Because I don't want to sacrifice time with the kids. Yeah. I want to see them, I want to yeah. pick them up from school and everything, so I fit work in around mm -hmm. it. But it means that I haven't got time for myself mm -hmm. and it's important to mm -hmm. make time for yourself. Absolutely. So it's not healthy and I need to better address it because it's not yeah. sustainable either. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I guess you're going to have to find a way to build in that time where you do spend some time looking after yourself yeah because I know how can you look after everybody else and come up with all these creative new ideas if you're not 
take exactly. care of themselves. But it's it's the creativity that hampers them in the first place. So yeah. it's a curse well, yeah. as well as a blessing. <laughs> but it's me. And yeah. I'm not happy unless I'm filling every hour with something. So it's, yeah. Um, so I have got your special one to ten questions. This is my favourite bit of the podcast. <laughs> and sometimes I'll confess and I watch them on YouTube. Sometimes I'll like skip to the <laughs> and then think, go back and watch the podcast. <laughs> I think a lot of people, of course, of course. I think a lot of people do. I think oh, we right, maybe okay, need to so make I'm just not weird. No, no, I think okay. we maybe need, need, to, need to make more of a, a snippet of just that bit. Yeah. Right? Definitely. And are you making notes? Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just almost oh, we thought about doing little tr- top trumps cards as well for people. Just oh, yeah, yeah that, that could be cool. But again, just hours in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you're one to ten. So okay. number one is good looking. Um, so I think when I really make an effort, I can push to a high seven. Mm. But the problem is I rarely make an effort. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at my happiest in a tracksuit. Looking just, yeah, I don't even care. And I think that's also a nice thing of me. Like I'm just really comfortable in my own skin. Mm. Like I rarely wear a lot of makeup I sometimes rarely wear makeup I, mm-hmm. and I think it's nice to be like that sometimes oh, definitely. but so I, I swing from like a four to maybe a seven so yeah maybe six I with average you on a night out Charlotte I think you're oh, <laughs> but still I was I, yeah I haven't tried properly since the kids were born oh, right, okay. poor Chris but this time this yeah. time <laughs> funny I think I am quite funny and uh, people don't know me I can come across quite uptight and a bit boring and professional and so it's always <laughs> you mean, you, 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 I think you're lying. You know, no, no, I can. Like sometimes when that first joke drops and it can be awful. Like and it's there's an awful sense of humour as well. It's you quite, quite dirty. Rude. I think yeah, you're the rudest yeah. people I know. Yeah, people are shocked by that as well because again, I'm quite professional and I like to think so anyway. I try. So the best compliment I ever got at a wedding was someone said called me Jimmy Carr's sister. So I was just like, I'm having that. So because of that reason, I'm going to say an eight. All right, cool. We'll go with that. Cooking. Okay. One, terrible. I burn toast. I'm just, oh, really? I injure myself. Chris prefers me out of the kitchen. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Fantastic. Terrible. Singing? I have quite a good man's voice, a very deep voice. I'm terrible <laughs> at any like high pitch. So I'd say okay. five. Okay. Interesting. Um, oh, drinking alcohol. How would you make yourself on oh, this one? Oh, bad, bad. I get drunk instantly on one glass and I turn into an instant idiot. Bad, you did. Yeah. So I'd say <laughs> two. <laughs> oh, raising children. Yeah, controversial question. And I like asking this mm-hmm. one because you get a range of different answers and everyone's so judgmental around this topic. Mm-hmm. Um, I try and find the best balance where I'm spending the right amount of time with my kids. Everyone wants to spend more time, I guess. I guess there's a limit some days mm-hmm. when they're just screaming. But yeah, I want to spend time, but I also want to spend time at work so I can earn and give them the best possible life and opportunities oh. and it's hard to get the right balance with that yeah and I suppose that's a sorry you didn't give me thoughts no but... yeah so I'd say seven okay. but yeah what were you gonna say I was gonna say having older children they need time to be able to find their own personalities find time to be bored so they can work out and keep themselves mm. amused it, it is I get the whole like tempting thing to kind of spend all of your time with them and mm-hmm. do amazing things and but actually some downtime and you know iPads yeah. and yeah. you working and all of that kind of thing yeah. is, is I th- I think what do I know but yeah yeah no it it's nice to hear that I guess again you just have this almost cultural baggage that you're trailing behind of what previous generations yeah. have done and my mum and dad are fabulous mm. so never get any of that from them but mm. you know just it's there isn't yeah it, it mm. is there and it's the guilt that you have to carry I, I totally underestimated the guilt I knew yeah. having children running a business would be hard work but I didn't I, I'm guilty either way I can't win I'm yeah. either guilty because I'm my business is neglected mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. more often the guilt is that I'm not spending time mm. with my children mm. But um, I do spend a lot of time with them. It, it probably affects scores later on because they are my priority. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Great. Being a friend? So, yeah. Th- this, fit that in? <laughs> this score is affected. If there's one thing that gets dropped, it's probably... It's probably wrong, but it is the friends, you know. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I've got a really lovely understanding friendship group. Um, but And they have children and they work and it's hard and we struggle yeah. to fit each other in so I'd, I'd say six I'm always mm. thinking of them but I sometimes mm. just don't even have time to pick up the phone yeah. to speak to them yeah. um, 
Yeah. It comes back. It yeah. comes back. It mm -hmm. does. It's, uh, I suppose that's the, the whole life thing, isn't it? You yeah. navigate your way through various stages yeah. of um, life and try not to give yourself too much of a hard time. And no, no. Yeah. <laughs> do your best. Yeah, do your best. always. Uh, intelligence? I can say something incredibly smart and incredibly stupid all in one sentence. I just swing from one to the other. I'm so, so stupid at so many things. Like Chris, like if you just saw me at home and, or in the kitchen, I'm just really, really stupid. But then like <laughs> creativity, I'm so creative. I did really well at school, at exams. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm just so polar opposite. So I'd, I'd say on average, probably like five Back to balance it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never a dull moment with you around. Yeah. Um, kindness? Um, kindness, according to my parents, something I have to, had to really work on as a child. Oh, wow. When my brother, I know, <laughs> in brutal honesty, when my brother came along, I was just like, don't like him, send him back. I wouldn't share any of my toys. And, and I think, yeah, as a child, I just was a little bit like that. But you know, when you've got a weakness, you always just work on it and then yeah. overcompensate for it. I think I'm really kind Super now. Kind. I certainly try to be, and I'm really thoughtful. I'm always thinking about others and mm. how they might feel. Um, but yeah, my wicked sense of humor sometimes lets me down. You know? <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, I do really try with that one. I've got better, so I'd say Good. seven. Okay, and has your brother forgiven you? I don't know. No. I don't know. I'll have to ask him. I'll we'll see if he listens to this and see. Yeah, we'll see. And sex. Yeah, so I reckon I used to be quite good, but I'm terrible these days. But there's good reason. Like, children, they destroyed my vagina. Like, it's, it's, it's a fact. How inconsiderate of them. I know. And this is like things, again, you don't, no one talks about this no. after children. They talk about how busy it is and how maybe your sex life's different because you're looking after children. But no, like it's still damaged. And I've been backwards and forwards to various people, pelvic physio, which are just like physio on your leg, but up your vagina. Mm -hmm. You're just sitting there having mm -hmm. a conversation with someone's massaging it, not in a good way. Um, and yeah, just, so I'd say, poor Chris, probably about three because it really hurts. Okay, that's never a good thing then, no. is it? Okay, we need to work on that. I know a man, I know a man. Oh. <laughs> Tell me more, Mel. Vagina man. Right. <laughs> it's a special chair. It doesn't hurt. It's not uncomfortable and I can recommend it. A special chair? <laughs> I'll give you the details, I promise. I'm not joking. Brilliant. Chris will thank me later. What and great, so will you. Yeah, what a great note to end mm. on. Special chair. We could do it live from a special chair, the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> you could interview him. He could be a guest, Jay. Yeah? So okay. He's a cool guy. Brilliant. There you go. Excellent. Thanks. Done. <laughs> Done. Hi, it's Ryan from Harvey and Hugo, and I am the videographer here. So are you looking for a new way to stand out in today's crowded digital landscape? Well, look no further than podcasting. Here at Harvey and Hugo, we specialize in creating and producing high quality podcasts that engage and inspire audiences. And with our comprehensive production services, we'll take care of all the technical details from the recording and the editing to the distribution and the promotion. With millions of listeners tuning in every day, it's the perfect time to start connecting with them on a deeper level. Let Harvey and Hugo help you unlock the power of podcasting and take your message to the next level.